Okay, we're going to use another example question in order to study something called pedigree charts. And what we're looking at here is an example. Sorry, my handwriting is going to be ugly because it is very cold in here. Pedigree practice. So pedigree chart is in a chart that looks like this. And uh, you've seen this with family trees and stuff like that. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, anytime you have squares, these are male. This key actually tells you. But just in case, so this is the standard uh, type of... Uh, key for this circles will usually be female and if it's anything different they'll actually tell you and if something is filled in then that means it has uh, that trait but again you have to read the question carefully f to figure out exactly what filled in means and in this case the key is telling me that a filled in box means a hemophiliac male and by there I'm assuming that a filled in female box would mean a hemophiliac female. So let's look at this question. This is a particularly challenging question because we need to understand something about sex linkage. So you should know how to do all your Punnett squares before you attempt a pedigree uh, type question because you might have to do some Punnett squares at the side to help you or to understand how inheritance works. So let me just pick up a few things from the question. Hemophilia is what this question is about. It tells me it's caused by an X-linked recessive allele. And so what I should do already is I, need, I should establish what uh, I should do for alleles, basically to represent that. First of all, it's X-linked. X-linked means it's going to be on the X chromosome. So I'm going to put down, let's see, X little h um, is the recessive allele. So X little h means hemophilia. So you should write this out really clearly. Um, X big H, therefore, would mean normal. And I know that normal is dominant over this recessive hemophilia. That should be one word, but hemophilia, um, if you don't know, that disease is a disease that actually uh, limits your ability to clot blood. And we're going to see that men get affected more. And if you've done the practice questions already, you might be okay with this. So now what is the question exactly asking me? It says, in the pedigree below, shown below, which two individuals in the pedigree must be carriers, must be carriers? All right. A carrier is somebody, let's see, if we're talking about eye color, this would not be a carrier. A carrier would be something like big B, little b. It means heterozygous. Now here, uh, because we're talking about sex linkage, boys I know cannot be carriers because boys are XY, so they will not have they will not have two copies. So only girls can actually be carriers. So I'm going to double check whatever answers I come up with at the end to make sure they're actually girls. Since girls have two X chromosomes, uh, they could be carriers. The only way they can be a carrier is if they have one normal allele and then one recessive allele. This makes them a carrier. They don't have the disease, but they have the potential to pass it on. All right. So great way to approach these. It takes a lot of time, but it's worth it in the end. It's like solving a puzzle. It's like a mystery going backwards here. I'm going to start with the for easiest clue. I want to figure out which of these women are, oops, those are men. Which of these women are carriers? So which two, I could guess, you know, two out of three, I have a pretty good chance of getting the right answer, at least one of them right. But uh, I want to be sure, and I want to show you how to be sure as well too. So let's start with this kid right here. This is a boy, and he must have an X and a Y chromosome. Boys are easy to figure out with sex-linked traits because he, because it's identified he's a hemophiliac. He only has one X chromosome. He can have an X big H. It must be X little H. Hope you're following along. Okay, that's okay. Now let's go ahead and the next logical branch is to figure out his parents. So let's look at the mom and the dad in generation two. So this mom here is a girl, obviously, so she's got to be XX. This dad is a boy, so he's got to be XY. I have a few clues here. Uh, number one, I know that the, since he's a boy, the only place he could get his Y chromosome is from his dad. And so if he got the Y chromosome from his dad, then this, X, then this X chromosome had to come from his mother. So I know that the dad gave him the Y. That means the mom had to give him this little H, had to give him this little H. Another way I can figure that out is this dad is normal. So I already figured out his genotype. He's got to be X big H. So that X, X little H had to come from over here. But the mother is normal, right? She's not diseased. So... Uh, her other allele, I can figure out, she's got to be X big H, X little H. And is that a carrier? Yes, it is. I found one of my carriers. That is individual Roman numeral two 
individual number, there's a one written under there. One. I have found one of my two carriers. Let's continue on. Where does the clue lead me? It leads me to go investigate this person's parents or this boy's grandparents from the mother's side. So let's go up here. Here's another woman who's XX and the dad has to be XY. The dad I know is normal because of my key. So he's got to be X big H. So once again, this big H had to come from here. This little H had to come from the mother and the mother's normal. So look at that X little H x big h from the powers of deduction i have concluded that the two carriers are roman numeral 2 dash 1 and roman numeral 1 dash 1 are my two carriers of hemophilia they are both women yes that's what i uh, deduced in the beginning and everything's good just for fun let's try to figure out the rest here uh, these are easy. Anytime you have a sex linked thing, a boy, X, Y, he's normal, he's got to be X, big H, Y. Same with this kid, X, big H, Y. What about up here? Well, this is dad. This is mom. It's easy to see that the, this, this son had to get the Y chromosome from the dad, uh, but that is normal, right? So he's got to be X, big H. So over here, definitely uh, this kid had to get the big H from this parent, from the mother, because he already got the Y from the dad. Remember, a parent cannot give both copies cannot give both copies only one that's the law of segregation and so this big H from here now I don't think I have enough information to figure out if this is a big H or a little H so that's a question mark I would have to know there I would have to know her actual parents to figure that out so if you take this approach um, you can solve most of these questions so understand what type of inheritance we're talking about is it sex linked is it X-linked recessive? There are some things, if it tells you that it's X-linked dominant, that may be a new situation, but you can figure it out. Just know that the dominant letter will actually be causing the particular disease. Um, is it blood types, multiple alleles? Then you can figure out uh, the same situation, but you have to understand the mode of inheritance. And the question will usually tell you the mode of inheritance unless it's something obvious like colorblindness or hemophilia or blood types. Then you can figure the rest of that out. What else do we need to know? If you see a picture like this, so check out, check out the diagram here, and you can see the only people that are affected are the males. Or if you have a big fat pedigree, and you can see that the males are obviously more affected than the females, it gives you a hint that it's probably sex-linked. Because colorblindness and hemophilia, because they're attached to the X chromosome, um, will end up affecting boys a lot more. If you don't remember why, go back and check out the sex-linked practice question, and uh, I've shown an example of why that is the case. Okay, I hope that helps you and you are able to solve pedigree questions as a result of um, understanding modes of inheritance and the basic ways of how pedigrees are set up with the keys. Okay, good luck.